Gone to Japan. There is a quantity log of delta L over L, or log V, it's a natural log, uh, which is called natural string. Only because of the natural log, there's nothing natural about it. <laughs> All string is natural. Uh, I'm a natural string state. Uh, <laughs> but the, why would you do this? It turns out the reason sometimes that's reported that way is because string is nonlinear in the relationship between displacement and, and the distortion. And it's sometimes easier to represent it as natural string. And the other quantity that's sometimes used is called quadratic elongation. And quadratic elongation, lambda, is S squared. And, or a stretch squared. And sometimes people report things in quadratic elongation. This falls out of several, many theoretical analyses, so people use quadratic elongation instead of stretch. And so the point of this, when somebody asks you, that says something about strain, the first question you might ask is, which strain are you using? Which numbers are you using? And then constant. But we're not even done yet because there's more to strain than just elongation, right? We already said it wasn't a vector. Uh, so let's go, let's think of another alternative, the other way of thinking of strain. Let's set up a different problem. <laughs> And let's now start with a pair of axes, x, y. Third dimension z comes out of this family of ten axes I can't call them x, x, and third doesn't matter what that is. Strange doesn't worry about that. Um, I'm going to take a box. I'm going to do this to it. No, you can attack me on your string. Still start, start with straight lines, end up with straight lines, so it's still a homogeneous proportion. And the vector field to describe displacement from any one of these things. This is a card deck model. You may play with table deck when you play with card deck players. So what's a characteristic of this? In this, in this hypothetical example, the motion is entirely in this direction, entirely in x direction, and no motion in this direction. So in terms of coordinate reference, it's y equals y. Initial positions and final positions are the same. So u in the y direction is always zero. Here, that's the way this is set up. So there's no component of this displacement field. The only displacement field in this case is u in the x direction. And that displacement field, u in the x direction, well, actually, what is this relationship? That's just a line, right? That's just a, a line going through the origin. And you could write that in terms of <coughs> without reference to that q, is that x is just y and an angle of psi, which I'm going to have to put in here, this angle of psi. would describe that line relative to this original xy coordinate would be given by that relationship. So similarly, you could write ux as given by y and psi. That's the displacement in the x direction, y comes a tangent, so the x 
position for the x displacement vector is the function y. Is that a number or a sign of axis angle? That's the sign. That angle. Okay. Now, extending this concept of the mu x to be y. Well, actually, I could do to be u y dy is going to be zero. That's it, right? But there is a quantity, the displacement gradient in the y direction. The displacement gradient of u in the y direction is the derivative of that quantity with respect to y. There's the easiest derivative. Is what? D D D D Y of Y is one. <laughs> that equals tangent of psi. We define the shear the shear strain gamma. Gamma equals tangent of psi. So a quantity, the shear strain, in this particular case, is given by the tangent of an angle. And now you say, what? Why would I? What is it? That's not what we just talked about, right? Strain was something about the angle, right? That's a that's an homogeneous proportion. Uh, so, what's that quantity, right? Or what's its range, right? You think of its range. Starts at what? When, what's the angle of, when, what's the tangent of zero? Zero. And does this get larger? What does it approach? Infinite. Infinite. Mm -hmm. So it just ranges from zero to infinity. A lot easier quantity to deal with, right? Because now there's other things, zero or one, or whatever the factor is. Uh, but that's a quantity called the shear strain. If it helps you any, this has a physical meaning, right? This is like a fault distributed over the area, right? That's a classic geologic problem. And this is the displacement of material shearing past the other, or shearing, yeah, shearing in the concept. So in this case, the shear strain is a quantity that's defined by change in angle, right? But we just said strain was defined by change of angle, right? Which is it? Which is right? Yes. Yes, that's correct. They're both. Strain has all of them. And that's the important characteristic about Strain is it contains both of those, but they're buried in another thing. So let's go back to our first problem and consider this a different way. Thank you. 